Welcome to r slash I don't work here lady, where we share stories about folks that are mistaken for employees by irate customers. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Atomic Karen goes ballistic and ends up breaking my expensive headphones and getting arrested. The second story, soccer moms off her meds again. The third story, crazy soccer mom flips SH on me for not helping her refuses to accept I don't work there. And the first story is Atomic Karen. This happened yesterday evening, as I was shopping for wine at the local liquor store. Still very fresh in my mind, though I think I may have left out some of the swearing. For a little background, I'm not young anymore. My beard and I know what I'm doing here demeanor lead people to often asking me for help, directions or whatever, almost regardless of where I happen to be. This particular day I was on my own, shopping only for myself, and as I didn't need to talk to anyone, I was wearing my headphones. I normally wear my headphones as I'm autistic and noise can really bother me at times. They're big bulky earphones that cover my whole ear and have very good noise cancelling. Bowers and Wilkins P9 Signature Premier if anyone's curious. Not cheap, but yes I consider them worth every penny. Normally when I wear my headphones no one bothers me. People see I can't hear them and just leave me be so I generally expect no one will be trying to talk to me and assume people talking near me are talking to someone else. All that said, I clock this Karen walking around the store with a sour look on her face. I want to talk to your manager hairdo in Atomic Blonde. We'll call her Atomic Karen, AK for short. I noticed AK looking at some cheap white wine as I was grabbing a couple of bottles of Strohn Barrel Aged Chard. Really nice bottle for not too expensive, for anyone who likes cool climate whites. I didn't hear much through my headphones, but I heard a bit of Karen call as I passed her. I shot her a raised eyebrow look as I kept walking, acknowledging her it all may have been a mistake. I wasn't really paying her attention, but I was aware she was in my space, so I moved along a little faster, thinking I was just in her way. I hear a faint hey again, the call of a wild Karen. Again I'm ignoring her as I move over to the section where they keep the general list sparkling wine, grab a couple of bottles of kava. Just as I'm putting the bottles in my cart, I'm suddenly aware someone is way too close to me. And suddenly my old school rap music is replaced with the din of the store, as my headphones go careening off my head to the ground. I wheel around, having been fully absorbed by my decision of whether I wanted actual champagne or just some kava for an upcoming family event. But now this interaction was already turned up to 11. My headphones are clattering across the ground. They had made a loud smashing noise on impact and the battery had flown out. My ears were ringing from the impact. AK was already laying into me. AK, idiot, that serves you right ignoring customers. You need to stop ignoring me and help me right now. Me, what? AK, you heard me, idiot. Help me now. Me, whoa, calm down. Why are you yelling? Why did you hit me? AK, you deserved it. You were ignoring me. Me, lady, I don't work here. AK, yes you do. Now come help me before I get you fired. Where's your manager? I want to speak to him about your incompetence. You can't treat me this way. Do you know who I am? At this point, a crowd is gathered, including some employees and a pair of police officers. If you're wondering how police got there so fast, well, they were already there, just outside the door. They were getting some homeless people to move as they had been hanging out in front of the doors begging for change. I walked past them on my way in. They had come inside to investigate AK's screeching. It was at this point where the initial shock of being hit in the head for literally no reason was starting to wear off and I was suddenly realizing my headphones might be broken. They're beefy design, cast aluminum and leather, but they're still a delicate set of electronics. I start looking around the ground for where the pieces that were not still attached to me by cord had gone. Apparently this was a huge insult to AK because she slapped me and shouted, AK, pay attention when I talk to you, you want another one? She raised her hand to strike me again and was surprised by a firm hand on her wrist. Her rage was about to be turned on whoever just grabbed her. AK, don't you dare touch me you little piece of SH, who do you think you are? She raised her other arm to hit her assailant as she wheeled on him, but he interrupted her tirade as she realized who had her arm. Police officer, ma'am, I'm officer redacted. You're under arrest for assault and disorderly conduct. Unless you want to add resisting arrest, I suggest you cease your tantrum and come with me. Well, this quieted her right down. Her tone immediately went from one of angry demanding to one of contrite mewling. AK. Oh no, you see, this man assaulted me. He tried to hit me. Police officer. 
We'll see what happens when we check the security footage, ma'am. But as of this moment, you're under arrest. Now, are we gonna have a problem here? AK went with the police and was put in the back of the cruiser, while the other officer took my statement. I was calm, surprisingly calm all things considered, or at least not combative, so I wasn't placed in cuffs. After checking the security footage, it was clear that she had assaulted me for no discernible reason. Unfortunately, my headphones were indeed damaged, and the part that holds the batteries in was nowhere to be found. So as it turned out, this story isn't over. I was told I could sue her for the value of the headphones if she wasn't willing to pay for them. When I talked to her, sullenly sitting cuffed in the squad car, it went roughly like this. Me. Lady, you broke my headphones and a piece is missing now. You're gonna have to replace them. AK. Whatever. How much do your SH headphones cost anyway? Me. They're $1,000 plus tax. AK. What? You're crazy. I'm not paying for that. F you. F off. F you. So that's it for today. I'm suing the lady for replacement headphones in small claims court. The officer told me that with the police report to back up my claim, it's pretty much guaranteed that she'd have to pay in the end. But for now, I'm SOL on the headphones, and it may take a year or more before the court date. I don't know when it'll be yet, but I'm for sure not letting this go. In the meantime, AK is being charged with felony assault and disorderly conduct. The cops said I probably won't have to testify against her, as with the video evidence, she'll probably just plead guilty. The second story is... Wrong department, ma'am. Wrong. So, this happens all the time to me, but one call stood out in particular. I work phone support for a fairly large tech company that has customers that run the gamut, from Fortune 500s to mom and pop coffee shops. I work support for a fairly advanced product, as I'm a network engineer, but occasionally someone finds their way through our phone system from the folks that handle the paperwork support, we'll say. I have no access to any of those systems, nor should I, as it's a separate branch of the company and firewalled between us in terms of access for reasons. Anywho, I'll be me, and customer will be bad day, BD. Me, thanks for calling generic tech company name, this is me, how can I help you? BD, OMG, thank you Jeebus, I've been waiting for three hours. Phone queue states five minutes, but uh, okay lady. Me, I'm sorry about the wait, what product are you calling in about? I don't recognize generic store number as a customer of one of my products, so I assume she's lost. BD. I can't run any cards. Fix it now. Me. So it sounds like you're in the wrong part of the company. Let me transfer you over to them and they'll get you sorted. BD. No, I will complain all the way up to the owner. And get your A fired if you transfer me. You help me right now, you dumb F. Me. Ma'am, I'll only say this once. Do not swear at or insult me. You've reached blah product support, and not black product support. You're in the wrong department. BD. I want your manager now. Me. Ma'am, you're in the wrong. BD. Guttural scream. Silence. So at this point I don't even want to get her onto the right department, as she will tear a new one into one of our less experienced support personnel, who already have to deal with jerks and A's all day. I put her on hold and talk to my supervisor, then the supervisor of the other department that the call should have gone to. She's still on hold. I transfer to the other supervisor. Now, I was not privy to the conversation, but she indicated she was lit into by this woman for a good 20 minutes about how rude I was and how I was swearing at her and calling her basically every mean thing on the hidden pages of the dictionary. Then gold struck. The manager told her that the calls would be reviewed if she had a formal complaint, and the employee, me, would be fired if that were found to be true. She was silenced. Part of what that department does for support is very discretionary on whether the business is graded a pass or fail, and we can make or break a company's adherence to the rules that govern a ton of their operations. BD knows this. BD knows she was being harassing and rude to me, and I was nothing but polite. Super knows this too. BD did not until that time know that the calls were recorded. Her attitude adjusted properly after that tantrum, and we found out she was having the day from hell and was just peeved at the world. The support person who ended up helping her with her review paperwork said that her car had gotten towed because her ex-husband basically stole the car the night before and went on a bender. A customer had damaged her only glass display case and it would be days before she could get a replacement and her furnace had gone out sometime in the middle of the night, leaving the house freezing. She was having a really bad day. In the end, she got help. She apologized for being pee, though to the support rep and not to me personally. And life goes on. One thing I've learned working in customer service is that you have no idea why a person who is angry is actually angry. I'll hang up on your A if you berate me or swear at me, but being angry, that I get and will let slide. I'm just glad she realized we could have just shut her out of a major part of her business functions if she kept it up. Bad day ladies day could have ended much worse. The last story is, 
What part of fishnets and leathers say I work at Malwart, you old hag? Okay, to preface this, I, female, 20, had an incredibly micromanaged childhood, so when I moved out at 16, I rebelled and dressed however I wanted to. I was what I affectionately referred to as goth light, which was totally left field for the small town I grew up in. I started working the day I turned 18, and have never had a job where I didn't have to wear a uniform of some sort, so my aesthetic is pretty much dropped off in the name of professionalism. I only dress up when I go out with friends, and I'm a graveyard shift worker, so I stop by our friendly neighborhood Walmart, because there's literally nothing else open in tiny town USA, at 6am, to pick up some brake fluid for my SH-tastic Cherokee. Let me set the scene. It's OF o'clock, and I'm wearing my Doc Martin boots with fishnet tights under my black denim shorts, some strappy tank top and a fire engine red leather jacket, while I'm wandering the automotive section. Walmart employees wear blue polo shirts and I think black pants. Either way, there's no way in heck you could see my attire and think I work there. So I'm walking around the aisle looking for the brake fluid and finally see it on the end cap. Then I hear the foreboding mm-hmm behind me that I recognized all too well from the year I spent in retail hell. I look over my shoulder and don't see anyone, so I shrug it off and squat down to grab the generic cheaper fluid. Then I see this woman come rushing around the corner of the aisle and stop directly behind me. She's standing so close I can't even stand up, so I crane my neck and look over my shoulder like, what the heck are you doing? Now, this lady was every Karen stereotype that comes to mind. From the never lost the baby weight but still thinks she's a trophy wife, to, and I'm not kidding, the let me speak to your manager asymmetrical haircut with chunky highlights that should have died back in 2007. This bee looked like she stepped out of a homeowner's association pamphlet and drove her luxury minivan right into effing Walmart at 6 in the morning. To give her some credit, she did move through the customary you work here right, but didn't give me a chance to respond before she delves into a series of like 5 orders and questions about where something is and how I'm going to walk my happy A all the way across the store to get it for her. I'm just looking at this bee incredulously and waiting for her to pause for a freaking breath. Finally she snaps, are you effing stupid? I want your manager now. At this point I haven't gotten a GD word in edgewise, and I'm not a timid person, so I spin on my heels and stand up, forcing her to take a step back. She starts screeching like a D-Banshee that I'm assaulting her, and I knew in T-30 seconds real employees are going to come running. I stand my ground and glare at her. I said something along the lines of, look lady, I do not effing work here, and gesture to my fishnets. Before she can start screaming again, I put my finger up and shamelessly rip into her saying, I'm glad I don't work here, and tell her she's a nightmare customer and an SH person. She starts hollering, and I refuse to yell back. So I turn heel and walk away, and this audacious cow has the nerve to follow me, telling me I'm obviously an S for dressing like that. Can't believe my manager would let me represent the company like that, and she's gonna have both our jobs. I flip her off over my shoulder and pass one of the employees rushing to the auto section on my way out. I grin at him and say, clean up on aisle 10, soccer mom's off her meds again, and head for self-checkout. As I was leaving, I saw one of the local police officers coming in, obviously responding to the disturbance. There's pretty much always at least one patrol car in their designated parking spot at all times. We jokingly call Walmart the second station. I smiled and waved at him and got in my car and went home laughing all the way. I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.